This is a CBC Podcast. Well, there's been concern about monarch butterfly numbers for years. Just last month, though, the species was listed as endangered by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. In Hampton, some dedicated volunteers have been doing what they can to boost monarch numbers. In fact, a couple of years ago, Hampton was the first community in New Brunswick to sign on to the National Wildlife Federation's Mayor's Monarch Pledge. Now, Council recently reaffirmed that pledge. Kate Turner is a very active volunteer who has spearheaded many of the efforts in the community. Hi there, Kate. Hello. So how did you first become interested in monarch butterflies? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, long ago, when I was going to Dalhousie University, I got to do a research project on monarchs, and then I also spent a uh, summer researching butterflies in Calgary. And so that kind of piqued my interest, and then I ended up doing a whole lot of other things <laughs> and come, came back to Monarchs after I moved to Hampton and started to become involved in the Hampton Nature Club and got to know people like Jim Wilson and Janet Kempster, who were doing a lot of local gardening for Monarchs and monitoring Monarchs, and uh, that started me off probably around 2017 or so. So you've been at this, of course, a lot longer than just a year. When did you become aware of this uh, this Mayor's Monarch Pledge program? Well, uh, I became aware of it through Nature New Brunswick. So they've been promoting it to um, to the different municipalities in New Brunswick. And so I had started a kids nature club in Hampton, um, supported by Nature New Brunswick, and they have a lot of resources about monarchs. And so I had started doing some monitoring activities and games about monarchs with kids and some school visits about monarchs as well. And then Alicia McGratton from Nature New Brunswick suggested that maybe all the things that we were already doing in Hampton could count towards the Mayor's Monarch Pledge because we had already started planting uh, milkweed gardens around Hampton and, and doing citizen science events and all of that kind of stuff. So we approached the town's leisure services department and they very willingly brought it forward to the town council and very swiftly, much much more swiftly than I would have imagined, the town was on board. Just and like that, was, that. Yeah, that was the spring of 2021. And then the town asked if we were keen to do it again. And so they reaffirmed their pledge in January, I think, of 2022. And that brings us to now. Boy, did it require, you know, some education with uh, with the town council or anything like that to get them on board? I did visit the leisure services um, committee and and spoke a bit about monarchs and milkweed and the different actions that we had already been doing and the new ones that we were hoping to take on, and they were all very supportive. What does it take to to sign on to this pledge program? I mean, what what are the boxes that you have to tick? I yeah, suppose. Yeah, great question. The pledge comes with a list of action items, so there are thirty in different categories, and the minimum that you need to commit to as a town is three. So it's kind of a low bar. You can you can commit to many more. Uh, so I could can I tell you about some of the ones that we've signed on to? I'd love that. The, the most high-profile one, I guess, is planting and maintaining monarch and pollinator-friendly gardens in prominent community locations. So my pride and joy in Hampton is the giant rain garden that has been planted in front of the Hampton Mall. And that's something that actually was planted in 2020. So before we signed on to the pledge, it was an idea from a local landscape architect and then the Cannabacasis Watershed Restoration Committee out of Sussex secured some funding to have the garden planted and the town gave their support, and the mall who um, takes care of the property pays for the maintenance, and a local landscaping company did all the, the hard work of digging, and volunteers coordinated by me did all the planting. And so we already had this beautiful garden. Uh, its function is to treat stormwater runoff from the parking lot, but it's also full of native plants and mostly dominated now by milkweed. The deer do seem to eat a lot of the other things, but they don't like the milkweed. <laughs> so it is thriving. And our first summer of having the garden there, it was full of monarchs. And we did several monitoring events, and we collected seed from the garden. So this was the summer of 2021, and that was the first summer that we had signed on to the pledge. So the the garden in front of the mall has kind of become the focal point for a lot of our our pledge-related activities. So another um, pledge activity can be participating in uh, citizen science monitoring events. So every summer we host an event where we 
examine all the milkweed stems and see how many caterpillars and eggs we find. So this summer we, we looked at 659 stems with about 20 volunteers. Wow. And we found, found 54 caterpillars and 28 eggs last week. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, and then, as I mentioned, we collect the seeds. So that's another action item can be collecting and distributing milkweed seeds. So we had a group of volunteers in the fall collect seeds from that garden, and we processed them and bagged them up. And the town has funded, funded printing some little postcards with an explanation on how to plant them. And then we gave those out on Canada Day at an um, educational booth that we had at our Canada Day fair. And we're also going to have those soon at the town's tourist information center for people to pick up for free. My goodness. So, I mean, this mall uh, rain garden has really become a focus. It's an opportunity for you to, to talk with people in the community yeah. uh, more. It's become a, a bit of an educational focus, but that's not the only place where there's gardens, right? That's right. Yes. We've also, since since 2020, planted gardens at um, all four of the schools in Hampton. The biggest one is in front of Dr. A.T. Leatherbarrow School, and Sarah Creighton has been the main teacher in charge of that garden. And we've had also community volunteers help with providing mulch and weeding. And uh, it was such a gift, actually. Monarchs usually come back to New Brunswick around mid-June, but you don't always see them right away. But uh, a couple of monarchs found that garden mid-June and laid a whole bunch of eggs. And so before the students were up for the summer, they were able to see all the eggs and the tiny caterpillars before they left. And uh, that was just such a treat. (laughs) So that's the biggest garden, but there's also one at the elementary school. There's milkweed now at the high school and at the middle school. And so, yeah, these can be now focal points for educating students about monarchs. One at a daycare, too, that we planted last year. So there is a lot more milkweed in Hampton in the last two years than there ever was before. Yeah. And are you seeing a a difference? I mean, I know you haven't been monitoring that long, but are you seeing a a difference in terms of the number of monarchs that you find in the community? Anecdotally, yes. But yeah, I don't have any hard statistics or data, but um, I certainly did not notice monarchs in my daily life before we planted all these gardens. And now every time I visit one of the gardens, I see caterpillars and eggs. And I've certainly seen a butterfly fly past me, a monarch, at least once a week (laughs) this year. (laughs) And I have never seen that before in Hampton. So it does seem to be a good year. And they really seem to be in areas where there used to not be milkweed, and now there is. And that's thanks to um, a lot of volunteers in Hampton. There's one other... um, activity that we've engaged in that I wanted to mention. So uh, milkweed does grow wildly around New Brunswick, mostly common milkweed. And there isn't a lot of it in Hampton, but there was one patch that was quite near a roadside. And we had monitored it in the past and found caterpillars. And then we'd gone back a week later and it had been mown by the big mowing machines that have to mow along highways to keep visibility good. And, And that was quite heartbreaking to know that there were caterpillars there and then they've been mowed down. So I worked with the town to have some town staff come out and see what the milkweed looked like. And they took on mowing this site around the milkweed patch. So we've marked off the milkweed patch. I designed a sign that said it was a protected area with the phone number of the town on it. And so for the last two years, the big mowing machines have passed by this site because it looks cared for and it's it's well signed now. And uh, I've found monarchs at it both years as well. So we're pretty happy about that little conservation effort. That's at Lakeside Drive in William Bell, if anyone's driving past and, and sees a little a little sign and a little patch of milkweed. <laughs> That's a significant difference. I mean, it, it yeah. really is. It sounds like, you know, it's taken volunteers and, and all kinds of efforts all over the community to, to make this happen, from the schools to the maintenance crews, kind of everybody. Yeah. Yep, and there's there's certainly there's a lot more that we could do, but we're very we're very pleased with how far we've come. <laughs> do you have future plans at this point? Well, I have realized that you know the more gardens I plant, the harder it is to maintain them all. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think I can keep going at the pace that I've been going at. But I do plan to continue growing it from seed myself, and I I do some pretty big giveaways of all the seedlings every spring. And uh, I do have plans to talk to the town in the fall to make plans for No Mo May next year to see how we can promote that as a initiative. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that more and more people will decide to grow milkweed in their homes and, and maintain and moderate, monitor it themselves. <laughs> that could go a long way. Yeah, I, I bet it feels good to have so many people get involved in something it like really this. It really does. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the newspaper article last week, and I'm sure this interview will, it has definitely garnered a lot more support and people are really interested in getting their hands on milkweed. <laughs> Listen, thanks so much, Kate, for telling us about it. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for the call. All right. You take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.